All right, ladies and gents, welcome back to the YouTube. And today, guys, we have the second episode of Restoring the Beamer. So for those of you who didn't watch the first episode, we did an extensive service on this Beamer. We changed the oil filter, we put new oil in, we changed the air filter, the cabin filter, the fuel filter, and we also put in new spark plugs. We also changed the wheels from these BBSs, which are quite nice, but are very damaged, to these very, very real BBSs. Yes, these are reps, but they look good and they are made well. And finally, we replaced this lower trailing arm because the old one was completely ruined. But we are so far from done with this restoration of the Beamer. We have loads to do. I'm gonna go through all of the problems that we still have now, A, the problems that I know how to fix, and B, the problems that I actually might need your help for because I have no clue. So, so. so firstly, starting off with the problems I know how to fix, this interior is in dreadful condition. I mean, just look at this, 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 and finally this, which has completely fallen off. Also, we need a new boot lid because somebody has keyed it. We also need a whole new windscreen because look at all of these cracks. We also need new tail lights because these are old and faded. We also need new badges and we need to fix the grills. We need to relocate the number plate and we need to buy new ones because these are old. Also, the handbrake doesn't work. And now let's go on to the problems that I have no clue how to fix. So firstly, the boot, it randomly opens. So I'll close it. I'll leave my car and I'll come back and the boot will be open. It's really weird. Now, whilst the central locking, now whilst the central locking works, when the car is parked and locked, it randomly sets off the alarm. So now onto the biggest problem that I don't know how to fix, the dashboard lights. So firstly, we have a traction control light, a handbrake light, and an ABS light. Now these, I have no clue what's going on with because sometimes they are off and they work fine. You can use the DSC button to turn them on and off as you should, but other times they are completely on the whole time and the traction control doesn't work, which is very strange. I have no idea why that's happening. And secondly, the airbag light is on when we haven't had an accident, we've removed no airbags and it just makes zero sense to me. So if you understand these problems and know why they're happening, let me know in the comments. So as you can see, I don't know how to fix many of the problems that we have, but we are going to start today with doing the windscreen. Now, obviously I'm not doing this myself. I have a windscreen man coming over to help us fix it. So let's get into it. Five minutes later. So ladies and gents, windscreen man, AKA Danny is here to help us out with this windscreen. Would you mind just like talking through exactly what it is yeah, we're doing? Yeah. So um, basically we're gonna start off by taking the interior mirror out. Yep. Um, then we'll take the window wipers off. Yep. Exterior trim. And uh, quite simple from there, you just cut around the edges of the windscreen with an angled blade and uh, wire out the bottom. Yeah, very simple. But yeah, so with that said, ladies and gents, let's get this new windscreen fitted. Okay, so as you can see, the budget Beamer now has a gorgeous new windshield, all thanks to Danny. I just wanna say a massive thank you because we got quoted 800 pounds by Autoglass to get this fixed. I was thinking F but Danny's done it for 230 pounds. So big up Danny. Thank you. Hey, my guy, thank you so much. No problem Appreciate that, bro, appreciate that. It's looking so good, <laughs> gassed. So now that we have crossed off the windscreen on the to-do list, we can now move on to the interior. Now, as you can see behind me, we have a pretty good condition E46 interior. Now, for the people who have ever owned an E46, you know that their interiors fall to pieces, so the interiors are very sought after. So it was not only a very good find to find this interior for a cab, in the exact color, but also it was only 300 pounds. So this is going to be a great addition to the car. It's gonna make it look a lot cleaner inside. So with that said, let's get it all fitted. The first thing to do with this interior was to remove the old seats. Now on these E46s, there are five bolts to undo to remove them. 
I then did the same thing on the passenger side. After removing the seats, I then discovered how disgusting the floor of the Beamer was. There was gum, peanuts, dust and dirt. So we went around with this hoover and also this brush on the end of the drill to give the floor a good clean. I then removed the rear bench, which is very simple. So as you can see from the back seats that we have just taken out, they have some very prominent tire marks. Now, what I think's happened here is somebody's taken the E46 out drifting quite clearly. They have their drifting wheels with hot tires on there. They've put them in the back seats and because the tires got so hot when they were drifting, they have permanently marked these seats it's just another valid reason why we definitely needed a new interior. After taking out the bench, I then moved on to the backrests. This is just two bolts at the bottom and then I just had to wiggle it free. Now to get to the rear pieces of interior trim, I had to lift up the roof cover and then I could undo the two bolts underneath the passenger side rear armrest and then I could remove the trim piece. I then disconnected the small speaker and then I could undo the three bolts which secured in the top trim piece with my six millimeter socket it and then I could pull it off. I then got our new interior trim piece to replace it and fitted it on. I could then connect back up the speaker to our new trim piece, tuck it in with this interior tool and do up the eight millimeter bolts with my ratchet and socket. I then did that exact process all over again on the other side. So after getting all of our new rear interior trim pieces in the car, I could then get in the new backrests. Followed by the new rear bench. And then I could get in this final center section of the rear interior. And after all of that, the rear of the interior was now looking amazing. The next task I decided to tackle was removing the door card. Now there should have been four bolts holding this in, but because one bolt was actually missing, I only had to undo three. I could then disconnect the door handle, undo a couple of electrical connections, and then remove the door card itself. So guys, after taking off this door card, we came to a little conclusion. As you can see here, I have the rear trim pieces that we just put on, and this speaker was sitting behind this trim piece underneath there, and we thought we'd do a little speaker test just to test that they all work, lo and behold, this speaker doesn't work. So what we're going to do, because it's getting quite late, we're going to leave it for today, and then tomorrow we're gonna come back, get a new one of these speakers, get it in, put this piece of trim back on, get the new door cards back on, and also wire up the other side, because the other side doesn't have any wired connections to the speaker at all. I'm not sure whether you remember, but one of the previous videos, the speaker literally just fell out of the door card. It wasn't connected up at all. So um, yeah. That is the plan. We will catch up with you tomorrow. The next day. So it is now the next day, ladies and gents. Let's get this interior back together and also fix the speaker system. So here is our new Pioneer speaker. Let's get this fitted. I started off by stripping the first white speaker wire and then the second one. I then twisted the wires to get the copper fibers together. I then connected both of those wires into this wire connector. I could then strip and twist the brown and blue wires that used to be connected to the old broken speaker. And after doing that, this is what they look like. I could then connect up the brown and blue wires into the wire connector. I could then connect up the white speaker wires into the speaker itself and then place the magnetic back of the speaker on the car. So guys, we now have our speaker in place. All of the wires are connected up. We're now going to play our copyright free tunes and see if this works. So three, two, one. Yay! All right, that's done, on to the next task. So after quickly putting back on the rear speaker trim piece, we could then move on to fixing the passenger door card speaker.
So here we have our speaker and here we have our tweeter. It's basically the same concept as the back speakers, so let's get them in. This was actually very easy compared to the rear. I didn't have to strip any wires. I literally just placed the wires into the wire connectors and tightened them up with the screwdriver and then we were done. So we're just gonna give this another test, just like the back. So let's get on our copyright free tunes. Should be an electrician, mate, I'm banging. The next task was getting on these new door cards. So here we have some lovely new clips from BMW. We're gonna match them up to the old door card and then get it on, so let's do it. I then took our new door card and passed through the wing mirror control wire and connected it up. I then connected up the door handle, tightened up the screws for the tweeter and lined up the door and secured it in with the clips. The last thing to do on this driver's side door card was to tighten up the four bolts that secure it in place. I then repeated that process again on the passenger side. As you can see, the new door cards were now looking fantastic. So the E46 is now looking very good and it's also sounding very good. We have every single speaker in here working and there was like three of them that didn't work and all of them are now working. So this one works, this speaker, this tweeter works. Same goes for the other side now. Neither of those worked, but we've sorted both of those. We have this speaker working, this tweeter working, as well as this speaker now, which was broken, and this tweeter. We have all of the rear pieces of trim on both sides, the new seats, the new backrests, all looking very nice indeed. We now have to sort out this armrest and this kind of section here, and then once we've done that, we can get the new seats back in and give it a big clean, and then that'll be the interior done. So to get this center console section sorted, I started off by removing the gear knob. After disconnecting the window switch, wires I could then remove this interior piece which sits around the gear shifter. Guys just look at how absolutely disgusting this is. Uh, um, um, oh. oh my god we've got like a million fags. Oh my, that is grimy. Five minutes later. That's got to be the award for the most fags ever in a car. We're not even done. <laughs> There's one there as well. So I started off removing the centerpiece by taking out this very botched self-tapper. I then removed these black trays from underneath the armrest, followed by the rear ashtray. I then moved on to undoing the two screws that sat underneath the rear ashtray, and I then removed this piece of plastic. I then popped out the hazard button and the interior door lock button. After that, I could then start on removing the armrest bolts. So there was one at the front here and also one at the back. So once I had removed those two bolts, I could then remove this main centerpiece. We then went around and gave everything a good clean. After that, I could then get in the new center armrest by kind of feeding it through the centerpiece. And then it was just a matter of tightening up those two bolts that hold it in place. Once that lovely new armrest was in place, I could then put in the new window switches and connect them up to the wires. I then placed back on the leather boot and got back on the old gear knob. So guys, we are reusing this old gear knob temporarily until the new part arrives. It hasn't come to post yet, so this is just to get me home tonight and tomorrow, but it should be coming within the next few days. Next, I put back on this piece of plastic fitted back in the rear ashtray, gave the floor another good clean, and then I could get in the new driver's side seat and secure it in place. And then I could do the same with the passenger side. So guys, the interior is now fully back together on the budget Beamer. We have everything in there. All of the new beautiful back seats and the back trim pieces are all in. We have the new seats and the new window buttons as well as the new armrest. Everything's had a solid clean. It is looking absolutely gorgeous, but there is a big but with this. Um, it's kind of two steps forward, one step back with this Beamer. If I sit in this driver's seat, you will see what I mean.
So as you can see, the seat is wobbling like crazy. I mean, it, it's not even a little wobble, it's a massive wobble. Now I'm hoping and I'm praying that this is fixable because if it's not, then I'm gonna have to try and find a whole new interior and they're so hard to find. I mean, just to show you how annoying this is, whenever I put my foot on the clutch, I go back. <laughs> they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. So guys, we have now finished the interior. We are moving on to the rear lights. We have these little lights and then the main tail lights. So these new ones and then the new main ones. Um, these are all brand new from eBay. Let's get these fitted. So I started off this job by removing the boot lining. I then unplugged the wiring loom, removed the bulb housing, loosened the 10 millimeter bolt with this ratchet and socket, and then I could take out the tail light which is mounted on the boot. So after I gave the surface a bit of a clean, I could then get in the brand new boot mounted tail light. I could secure it in place with my 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. I could then put the bulb housing back in its place and then connect up the wiring loom. I then repeated that exact process process all over again on the driver's side. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. So because I snapped the clip, I had to duct tape the hell out of the bulb housing to secure it in place. I could then plug back in the wiring loom, get the boot lining back on, and then move on to the main tail lights. So as you can see, this little section of the tail light is looking immaculate, very, very shiny. This is the next section of the tail light we have to move on to, obviously. However, there's a bit of a problem. I bought coupe lights because, because I'm an idiot and I assumed that they were the same, but they're not. So we can't use the tail lights that I've purchased for this section of the tail lights. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take this lens cap off, polish them and make them look as shiny and new as this because they're actually in decent nick. So let's get into it. So I could start this job off by undoing this very botched self tapper. I could then remove the bulb housing, unplug the wiring loom, and then I could get on with undoing the bolts that secured in the tail lights. I could then remove the passenger tail light and then get working on the driver's side. After removing both of the tail lights, I then worked on taking off the lenses. To do this, I applied some heat to the adhesive that surrounds the tail light, and then I could pry the lenses off. So after getting off the lenses from the lights themselves, I could then begin the polishing process. So once I had made the lenses nice and shiny with the polisher, I could then go around with this clear bathroom sealant and then I could stick the lens back onto the light itself. Then all that was left to do was to get the lovely new refurbished lights fitted again back onto the car and then we were finished. To give you some perspective as to how much better they look, here is what they look like before and this is what they look like after. So the next job is to do another oil change. Now, I know we did this in the previous video, but because the old oil filter was so dirty and it hadn't been changed in miles, we need to do another one, basically just to help flush everything out. So let's get into it. So I started off this final task by removing the oil cap. I then took out the oil filter, lifted the car up. I then undid the sump bolt and removed the oil. After the oil had drained, I then put the sump bolt back in. I then lowered the car back on the floor, removed the old oil filter from its seating and put the new one in. And and then I could get in the new oil filter, tighten it up with the socket and ratchet, get in some new 5W40 oil, and finally 
place on the oil cap and then we were finished. So guys, that is where I'm going to leave the video today on the budget Beamer. We have done so much in this video. We've changed the interior, changed the windscreen, redone the tail lights, and we've given it an oil change. So if you did enjoy, make sure to smash that like button and click that subscribe button if you haven't already, because we've got so much more content coming on this car. We are going to make it so very clean. And make sure also to comment down below what you think of this car and what we are doing to it. And with that said, I will catch you guys in the next one.